Blake Martinez played five years in the NFL, but he's gained more popularity over his retirement than he ever did as a player. I can't hide it. I'm, the contract's over after this, so it's, this year was something special to me, the guys we had. I've never had a, a group of guys like this that just wanted to win, wanted to be better every day. It was awesome to lead this group, whatever ends up happening in free agency, I'll, uh, I'll never forget this year. NFL GMs often allude to the fact that the NFL season is a long, grueling war of attrition. But the chess pieces they deploy are real people, not plastic figurines on the chessboard. But these pawns, if you will, unlike the board game, can actually move in more than one direction. They can take a step back and demand more money, or sometimes jump off the chessboard completely. Some will even do it in the middle of a game. Now, some of the pieces are really kings and pawns clothing. Yeah, they'll stick to moving one space at a time until it no longer makes sense to do so, as they open up multiple paths throughout their careers. My mom was kind of the same way. When I got back into it about a year and a half ago, she threw all my cards away because she was like, they're probably worth nothing, like whatever, we're gonna get rid of them. Now you see how crazy it is. In November of 2022, last month at the time of this recording, linebacker Blake Martinez retired from the NFL midseason after reportedly selling a Pokemon card that was worth twice as much as his base NFL salary. I actually had no intentions of ever touching this story because while it's an interesting headline, I thought just that. It's an interesting headline. But then I realized that beyond the sizzle, there was actually something here to sink my teeth into. The real nourishment here lies in the story of Blake collecting Pokemon cards as a kid before they were worth the massive dollar amounts you see today. So while the Pokemon card collecting and selling obviously brings a lot of monetary benefit to Blake as of now, when I looked into the story I realized it actually offers something a hell of a lot more valuable. It offers a connection to a friend, one who changed Blake's life forever. But other than that, Y'all already know what time it is, fellas. <sighs> Cue the way. Yeah, well, I'm no quitter, cause I'ma go, I'ma go, I'ma go get her. All right, real quick before we jump in, a quick word from today's sponsor, Raycon. The holidays can be a great time to catch up with family, but at some point you want to get away from the noise and have a moment to yourself. Raycon Everyday Earbuds can help you escape for a moment without having to physically duck out early. This year, I might give a pair of these to my cousin. She works in retail and could get a lot of use out of the awareness mode. The mode allows you to hear what's coming through the earbuds while also allowing you to hear your surroundings. Raycon's Everyday Earbuds offer premium sound, useful features and an almost custom comfortable fit they also have up to a 54 hour battery life and that's super clutch i'm terribly irresponsible when it comes to recharging these but every time i reach for them in the middle of the night so i can listen to a podcast to fall asleep on they never seem to let me down they always got enough juice to get me through and for the next month raycon will have the countdown to christmas with a new pop-up flash deal for you to take advantage of not one not two but every single day you can also find Raycon in stores now like Kohl's or Walmart but at the end of the day you're gonna get the best deal at buyraycon.com slash flimlo the Raycon website also offers free shipping free returns and buy now pay later options so click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash flimlo to get 15% off using code holiday there will also be new pop-up deals every day during Raycon's countdown to Christmas. But just so you know, even after the countdown, you can always go to buyraycon.com slash flimlo and that'll always get you the best deals available on Raycon. Man, shout out to Raycon once again for sponsoring the video. Without further ado, it's time to jump back in. Mm. In present day, Blake Martinez is that dude. He's a 6'2", 240 pound civilian who, at 28 years old, already has had a successful NFL career. On top of that, he's now become a big part of one of the world's biggest phenomena. Two things that many of us loved as kids, Blake Martinez has made millions from both. But while Blake may be the man today, as a kid, dude was anything but. 
Blake grew up loving nerd culture well before it was as popular as it is today. Back then, you can get teased or bullied for being too into video games or action figures, maybe getting into an anime that wasn't Dragon Ball Z, or maybe even collecting Pokemon cards instead of these. On top of being into nerd culture before it was fully adopted by, you know, the larger society, Blake was also a kid who moved a lot. And we all understand the challenges that come with that when you're trying to make and keep friends growing up basically blake's dad was working to get the family's excavation business you know growing so they'd have to constantly move from town to town blake says he moved more than 10 times during his childhood blake was a quiet kid until he warmed up to you but moving around so much he never really had the opportunity to do that therefore he had trouble making friends but when he was third grade he moved to tucson arizona and there he attended ironwood elementary Blake's first day at his new school started like it always had. He walked alone, he ate alone. But that's when he met his childhood best friend, Richard Blau, a kid who would literally change the course of Blake's life. I'm not overstating this and you'll see as the video goes on. Here's a quote from Blake on how he met his best friend. In third grade, I switched schools. In the cafeteria, he came up to me and was like, hey, you're a new kid? Why don't we become friends? Ever since then, we hung out all the time, played Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, all the card games you could think of. For me, one of the coolest things about Richard going up to Blake and making him feel more comfortable at the new school is that this isn't one of those situations where there's kind of this outcast kid who gravitates towards the new kid because they both don't have any friends, right? So their friendship is solving a problem for both of them. There's nothing wrong with that, but I think it says even more by the fact that Richard was that dude. He already had a friend group. So when he approached Blake to become his friend, he didn't just invite him to be his friend. He invited him into a friend group of like, you know, four or five kids. But those of y'all who didn't actually have to live this, just imagine being a new kid. You remember seeing a new kid and for on the first day, somebody to just invite you in and you got a click, you got a squad to run with from day one. Like that's a big deal for a young kid, bro. Like that's a lonely feeling and Richard pulled Blake up out of that. I think that's incredibly dope. Here's a quote from Blake's mom on the situation. He had this sense of security because he had this one person he knew he could talk to in class and he can sit with at lunch. It felt good as a parent to know he had somebody because he really hadn't had that before. Yeah, man, it was inseparable for a while. You know how it is with your best friends when you're young. You ain't got nothing but time and you spend as much of it as you can with your partner. No bills, y'all ain't got no kids yet. Like, you're present in every moment. It's pure, man. Those are some of the best times. The squad played sports, video games, had pizza parties. They even dyed their hair together one time. By middle school, the best friends was still going strong. And Blake was able to stay in the same place long enough to grow roots. It was right around that time where Blake started to shine on the football field. And while football wasn't Richard's sport, dude was a baseball player, a pitcher. He was nice. At 10 years old, this kid actually pitched a no-hitter in a Thornydale Little League Championship game. But even though dude was nice in sports, he was actually better known for being a nice person. The same way he'd sensed Blake's nervousness on the first day of school and invited him to come and hang with his friend group. Like based on everything I read about this dude, that's the same energy he brought with him everywhere. And you're gonna see what I'm talking about as we keep going. But it's one thing to be a kind person when everything's going right. But when everything goes wrong, it shows you who you truly are. Here's a quote from Richard's mom. Every day he always wanted to go to school. I'm like, really? There's no, I need a day off? Can I stay home? He wanted to go to school. He wanted to be with his friends. It's almost like he knew he had to do a lot in a short amount of time. One day at recess, Blake and Richard was outside hooping. Richard gets past his man and goes up for the layup. But when he came down, something went very wrong and he collapsed right there on the ground. The teachers rush over, but Richard can't move. For 30 straight minutes, he's completely immobilized. They rush him to the hospital when he's got a cracked femur. That was only a side effect of the true issue. Within 24 hours of Richard being rushed to the hospital, the 12-year-old was diagnosed with osteosarcoma, 
an aggressive form of bone cancer that's mostly found in children. Meanwhile, every day at school, Blake waited on the person who had welcomed him in with open arms. But after two full weeks of waiting every day, there was still no sign of Richard. He wasn't coming to school and he wasn't at home. I recall perfectly the first time I figured it out and I was crying like, why? Why is this happening to my best friend? My mom was there for me. She was like, Blake, God has a plan. Everything happens for a reason. You got to go with it and be there for him. Whenever he needs something, be there for him. Help him and just be that friend that he's been towards you. Richard had to go through chemotherapy and surgery to replace his femur and insert a metal rod. But Richard learned to walk again and even started to jog some. 12 year old kid that's going through all of this somehow still found a way to look on the bright side. Here's a quote from Richard's dad. We were so devastated, but he would just not get down. He'd never be depressed or complain or anything. We couldn't believe it. Here's this kid going through all of this and still having an upbeat personality and demeanor and wanting to make people laugh. We were just amazed by it. After his chemo sessions, this kid, bro, he would go around the hospital cheering up other patients. He didn't know it at the time, but he was setting a precedent. He was setting an example that his best friend would one day be able to carry out on an even larger scale. And if not for Richard setting the example, we may never get this version of Blake Martinez. Richard kept himself going by replacing some old hobbies. He could no longer pitch a no hitter or go hoop at recess. So he started mastering pool and learning how to play chess. He just redirected his energy. The kid was, yeah, he was that dude. When Richard was finally released from the hospital, Blake and his other friends was right there waiting for him. Richard couldn't hoop? Cool, I got deeper into the Pokemon cards and watched TV and movies. It really didn't matter. They was just happy to be together. Things had been progressing well for Richard, but he kept having to get surgeries over and over to remove metastasis from different areas of his body. It's like every single time he thought he was in the clear, the cancer would just come back. He kept fighting it off, it kept coming back. Then after his fourth surgery to remove the metastasis, he sadly developed a blood clot which led to a heart attack and Richard passed away three months before his 15th birthday. I've been having experience with childhood cancer um, with my best friend losing his life with it. Uh, it's just important to me to come out here and and show my support to stuff like this because anything you can raise. The law of conservation of energy. The law states that energy can't be created or destroyed, only converted from one form of energy to another. So when the world lost the beacon of positivity in Richard Blau, the positive energy he brought was passed over to Blake. So Blake and his family move once again, and he doesn't see Richard's family for years. So he eventually settled at Canyon Del Oro High in Oro Valley, Arizona. There, Blake became a two-time defensive player of the year on top of Carrie carrying the load on offense. He accepted a football scholarship to Stanford, but there, his first two years were actually pretty quiet. But he did go over 100 total tackles during each of his final two seasons at the school. After four full years of grinding it out in college, Blake was drafted in the fourth round of the 2016 NFL Draft. Blake had come a long way from Ironwood Elementary, but he still carried the energy left behind by his friend. So when he got the money, he didn't forget about the mission and he made himself a fixture in the children's hospitals. There he would look to brighten kids' days and make them feel more comfortable like Richard did for him. Now, if you're not familiar, the NFL has this thing called My Cause, My Cleats, where the players design custom cleats representing causes that are near and dear to them. Back in 2017, Blake participated, and he honored his childhood best friend, Richard Blau, and he teamed up with St. Jude's Children Research Hospital as they looked to find cures for kids with cancer. Now, this could be a coincidence, but after a decent rookie season, 2017, the same year Blake came out with those cleats, was also the year that he came into his own. He finished with 144 total tackles and just short of 100 solo tackles. He tied for the most tackles in the entire league. After the season, he took a trip back to Tucson, Arizona. There he visited with Richard's parents who he hadn't seen in years. He hand delivered the cleats he'd had designed for their son and he made sure they knew how much Richard meant to him. It was pretty emotional because this was the first time Blake has seen them since he was 16 years old. Blake is who he is partially because of Richard. He knows how short life is. He knows how important it is to be there for a friend. 
I think a lot of that comes from the fact that Richard was always there for him. He brought him in and made him welcome when he felt alone. That friendship, it meant a lot. Back on the field, Blake kept the same level of production for three straight years in Green Bay. But he wasn't signed to a second contract there and had to go all the way to New York to get paid. The Giants gave him a three-year deal worth $30 million, 19 of which was fully guaranteed. But he happened to get paid going into the pandemic, and I'm pretty sure the funds was burning a hole in his pocket. So he did what he did the last time he was stuck in the house, and ended up falling back down the Pokemon well. He participated as a buyer in a live box break and would eventually decide to host box breaks himself. A box break is a live online event where buyers purchase spots from the breaker or the seller. So Blake in this case, they buy the spots in an attempt to obtain high value sports cards, Pokemon cards, whatever. So when he gets to your slot, this is your box and whatever's in this box belongs to you. But you get the added excitement of a live opening and everybody in the stream gets to see what you got. After the stream's over, they package it all up and then they send each buyer their cards. That's what it is. Only months after Blake got back into Pokemon, his sixth NFL season kicked off. But three games on the infamous MetLife turf and he tears his ACL out for the season. Now, one ACL injury in this day and age isn't usually a career ender for any NFL player. But if you look at the career of Blake Martinez, everything stops right here with this injury. His rookie season, he had to get up to speed, but after that, he was a beast for years in Green Bay, and when he signed with the Giants, it looked like more of the same. Like, dude didn't go over there and disappoint. He lived up to his contract for at least the first season. The production, the leadership, he was defensive captain. Then he got one injury, and nothing was the same. In February of this year, 2022, this card sold for 900,000. It's a Pikachu Illustrator card, super rare. They're said to only be 40 of these on the planet. So Blake just watched the dude make 900,000 on a Pokemon card and immediately gets asked to take a pay cut. For NFL players, the most exciting thing that happens in August that go against another team in the preseason. But for Blake, this August would be different from most, as the business of the league was draining Blake of his passion. He was starting to reconnect with his childhood spark as his passion for football faded just a little. On August 1st, just a few days after training camp had opened, Blake finally got a sign that he just couldn't ignore. The same type of card that sold for 900 k has somehow found its way to Blake's collection. Dude had had no guaranteed money left on his deal so coming off an injury and Blake was in a position that him Richard and the rest of their friends would have never believed Pikachu was actually offering more financial stability than Roger Goodell one month after acquiring the car, the Giants released their former defensive captain. All it took was bad luck, an injury, and a coaching chain. And Blake went from defensive captain to completely without a job. If he recognized the signs, everything was pointing Blake away from the NFL at that point. Because he was already making good money on the side doing Pokemon box break live streams. The nostalgia itself was intoxicating and the money you could make made it feasible. As an adult, you know it can be hard to justify spending too much time on a hobby that makes you feel great, but doesn't actually put food on the table. If you can marry those together, great feeling and money, bruh, you about to have some good years. But once you walk away from football, that's usually it. So it's hard to walk away if you still have an opportunity. On October 4th, Blake was offered just that. So he signed a small deal to go and play with the Raiders. It wouldn't take Blake long to see his heart wasn't in it. This part goes fast, so I'll just list out the timeline. October 4th, Blake signs with the Raiders. Six days later, he barely plays against the Chiefs. On October 14th, he put the card up for auction. October 29th, Blake finds a buyer. Let's pause the timeline real quick to talk about how much the car sold for. So in February of that same year, the exact same car ended up selling for $900,000. That particular car was graded near mint condition. So essentially they rated it a seven out of 10. Blake's car was rated a gym mint condition, a 9.5 out of 10, damn near perfect. It was a better version of the near million dollar car that sold in the same calendar year. 
A few months earlier, it would have sold for over a million. But Blake's car ended up going for quote unquote just $672,000 at auction. One year before the exact same car, this one rated a 9 out of 10 condition, sold for just $420,000. So the dude that bought that 7 out of 10 for 900 could have got the same card in better condition for half of the money. October 29th, Blake made almost as much as his non-guaranteed minimum NFL contract. The next day, his team got blues by the Saints as Blake mostly watched, only played 20 snaps. One week later on November the 6th, his snap count triples and he looks like the old Blake. He gets 11 total tackles, 8 of which were solo, and he also had 2.5 tackles for loss. November 8, CBS writes about Blake's game-high 11 tackles, saying he would continue to play heavy snaps. But this ended up being a freezing cold take as he never took the field again after that game. Two days after the article, Blake announced his retirement, saying he chose to step away to focus on family and other passions. Dude seamlessly went from one childhood game to another. And the crazy thing is, he's made millions from both. So Richard's story helped me get back on track and his actions helped Blake become the man he is today. A well-rounded chess piece who's no longer confined by the extremely limited move set of a pawn. He shed his plastic skin and now walks boldly into the future, using passion as his fuel and his best friend as his anchor. Always find time for the things you love, man.